Hey guys, and welcome back to a new video. In this video, I will show you how you can share resources between iOS and Android if you have a KMM project. Because by default, if you have things like string resources, so just strings you want to show on your UI, which you might potentially localize, so if you want to support multiple languages with your app, then normally you have to have your own set of resources for Android and your own set of uh, resources for iOS. But since you actively built the same app, it would make more sense to put these resources at one shared place. But since Android and iOS handle these resources differently, that doesn't work so easily. But in this video, I will show you an approach how you can achieve that. And not only with string resources, by the way, but also with images. And for that, we will use MoCo. MoCo stands for Modern Kotlin, and that is a set of libraries for KMM, which try to solve these common challenges we have in KMM projects. And one of these MoCo libraries is just one to share resources. So it will effectively give us a way to define our resources in our shared module, and it will then have a Gradle plugin, which will kind of compile them into an Android version and an iOS version. But one more thing, I will host a completely free live workshop for all freelancers among you or those who want to become one. And the topic will be how you find the right client as a mobile development freelancer. So I will share all my strategies in that live workshop, how I managed to get to a point where I don't actively need to look for clients anymore because they all knock on my door. The workshop will be on June 11th at 3 p.m. PM UTC time. So convert that to your time zone and really make sure to attend because there won't be any recording. So if freelancing is interesting to you, then save your free spot by clicking the first link at this video's description. And to get started with that, we of course need the MoCo dependency. So I first want to switch to our project view here and collapse that, open that, and go to our build.gradle KTS project file. And here we need to insert this Gradle plugin, which I just talked about from MoCo. So it's an Icerock MoCo resources generator. And you will find all these things that I copy paste here in my GitHub repository, which I will of course link down below. So that is the dependency for the Gradle plugin. Now we also need to add the dependency to our shared module. So in shared, um, built at Gradle KTS. We want to open that. You want to scroll down to our common main blog by getting where we can simply add a dependencies block. And here we add API and our MoCo resources. That's it for the dependency, but we also need to scroll up to this list of iOS versions we have here because here we need to add these two export blocks um, so that we also make this work on the iOS side. So without these export blocks, uh, that won't be recognized on the iOS side. Then we can synchronize this here with Gradle and hopefully we don't get any errors. And if that is done, we can scroll down here in our shared module uh, Gradle KTS, uh, maybe below this Android block, because here we now need to configure this MoCo plugin. And we do this with such a multi-platform resources block in which we first of all need to define the multi-platform resources package. So that will be the package name where the shared resources will be generated. So Moku will effectively just um, take our resource files in form of XML files, at least for the strings, and compile them into just normal Kotlin objects, I think. And for these objects, we need a package name. So that will just be my normal package name here, com.plcoding.kmm underscore sharing resources. You, of course, need to pick your package name, whatever you chose for the project name. And what we can also do is we can say multi-platform resources class name, which is optional. We could set this to something like shared res, which will then um, just be the class name for the um, shared resources. So then in our code, we will write something like shared resources.strings. Hello world string. If you don't set this value, then the default will just be MR, I guess, for MoCo resources. That is short and crisp, but um, if someone is new to the team, they might not know what that stands for, especially if they are iOS developers. Right now, we get errors here. Hopefully, they will go away after we synchronize the project. No, uh, they are not. Uh, that is because I forgot to add the Gradle plugin up here in our plugins block. So simply add this line of code here. Again, you can of course find this in uh, my GitHub repository. So this will just apply the Gradle plugin here in this Gradle file. Let's click try again and hopefully then our block here turns green. Yes, it does. That is looking good. So now we are ready to use these shared resources. So the next step is to define our resource. Now I want to start with a simple string resources here before I show you how you can also share image resources. And for that, we now need to go to our shared module, open source, open common main and in this module where our shared code is in we want to create a new directory and uh, gradle already or android studio already suggested 
we want to create this resource directory in which we can put our application resources. And for the Moco plugin to work, it needs a specific structure for these resources. So inside of this folder, we now want to create another directory, which is called MR for Moco resources. And now inside this MR directory, we want to create a base directory. That will be the directory for the um, default language. So English in our case. So we want to go inside of this package, new file, and this will simply be strings XML. So this is now just completely the same as we know from Android. We want to add this XML encoding thing here with UTF-8. And then here we can add um, actually it's resources. So we want to have a resources block and inside here we define strings. Um, there's no autocomplete here sadly because I don't think this, um, yeah, this is not a normal place to put our string resources, which is why Android Studio doesn't show anything here. Well, let's just define a string here. For example, hello, hello world, which in English would just be hello world. And I also want to show you how we can work with placeholders. So if we say hello X, and we want to replace this um, at runtime with a certain name, for example, so it says hello Philip, for example, and then I also want to show you how we can do that with uh, this library. Now we defined our base string set. However, we also want to be able to localize our app. So if we switch the language on our device, then we also want our app to switch its language. And for that, our app, of course, needs to know what all these strings would mean in a different language. I will define that as an example here for German. So we want to copy this strings XML file, go to Moco resources, right click and create a new directory which is now called DE. So that is the country code of Germany. Of course, if you want to translate it to a different language, then you need the country code of that corresponding language. Let's create that DE package. And in here, we want to paste our string resources um, XML file. This is now exactly the same, but now inside this DE strings XML file, we want to put the translated strings. So in German, hello world would be hello Welt and hello X would be Hello, X. And that is at least everything we need to do to make this work on Android. So to have access to these shared resources on the Android side, uh, let's uh, build our project. So rebuild, uh, go to build, rebuild project, because then uh, the Moco resource library will generate this cotton file, which we will need to access these resources. Usually uh, rebuilding a KMM project <laughs> takes a while. Um, so I will see you back when that is done. All right, my project is finished the building and let's try out if everything worked. For that, I want to create a little helper class in our common main uh, module, which will help us to just access these string resources in an easier way in uh, on both Android and iOS. So here on uh, KMM sharing resources in our root package in the common main the module, we want to create a strings class. This will be an expect class. Um, so I hope you're familiar with that if you're a little bit familiar with KMM. Otherwise, I have a KMM beginner course on YouTube and I call this single function instead of this class get to just get a certain string resource with a specific ID. And the ID is now not an integer anymore as we know it from Android. It's instead a string resource. So this comes from Moco resources as you can see. And we also want to be able to pass some arguments which is just a list of any. I'm not using var arg here because that kind of compiles into a weird thing on iOS, which makes it hard to um, pass arguments in iOS. So a list is actually easier for that. And this will then return the string that we retrieve from our resources. Now we also need to have the actual implementations of the strings class in both our Android main and iOS main uh, directory. So in Android main, we create a strings class. It will be an actual class in this case. And here we say we have an actual function get Again, takes a string resource ID and arguments, which is a list of any. We'll return a string. And in here, we now have the implementation to actually retrieve such a resource. So first of all, I want to say return if, if the arguments list is empty. So if we did not pass any arguments, then that means we just want to normally retrieve that string resource. We don't want to pass any arguments. We don't, to, we don't want to replace anything in that string. Then we can just say string desk. So a string description, that resource where we pass our resource ID, which we want to retrieve. And we say dot to string. And here we need to pass the context. So on Android side, it of course needs the context to be able to access resources. And this context can also be passed here in our constructor. So private val context like this, and then else. So if we are, um, if we have arguments, then we want to say id.format to pass these arguments. And here we want to say 
asterisk um, args dot two typed array. So we just pass all these arguments here as var args. And I assume we could also directly pass the list here, um, but I will leave it like that. I like var args. And we then say to string again and pass in our context. And that is our Android side implementation on how we retrieve a string resource. So if we need to access a string from the Android side in our Android main directory or in our Android app module, we can then copy this class, or actually let's take this class and the strings one, go to iOS main, and now have the same or similar implementation here on iOS, paste this, press enter, continue. Um, iOS doesn't know context, we will remove that anyways. So let's get rid of that. We don't need any constructor arguments here. And here on iOS, we actually want to say um, resource ID dot localized. So this will translate the um, resource to whatever language the device is on. Same here. And we can also remove the um, unnecessary imports. And to now try this out, we need to go to our Android app module, in which we have our Android specific source code in main activity. And here in our surface, we want to have a column where we pass a modifier of modifier fill max size. And let's say we have um, like a vertical arrangement of center and a horizontal alignment of center horizontally. And in here we will then have a text where we just want to display our string resource, our hello world string for example. And for that I still like to have a little helper function that we can easily call in a composable. So let's create a composable called string resource. We'll take in an ID, a string resource. This can now take a var arc um, of arcs of type any and will return a string. And in here we can then say we return our strings class, which we created in our shared module, we pass in the compose, um, oops, the compose context, so local context dot current, and then we get the string resource with the ID and arguments. And we need to say arguments dot to list. And now we have a very convenient way to access these strings in our compose code. So here in our text, we can say we have a string resource. The ID is shared resources. This is the class that was generated from Moco dot strings dot hello world. And here you can see all of our strings that were generated from that plugin. So hello world and arguments in this case are none. Let's do it this way and also have a second text where we use our other string with a placeholder. So here we have hello x and here we have some arguments. Actually, we don't need to pass these as a name parameter. So here we can rather pass something like Philip. So let's now launch this on our emulator and see if at least the Android side works at the moment. And there we go. My device is actually on German. So you can see the German variants of our strings. But let's also change this to English to see if the translation works. Um, so let's close this. We can go to uh, settings down here. And then go to languages somewhere down here under system languages and then here we can switch our languages from uh, German to English. So English is priority number one. Then it's switched. You can see add a language. It's now English. If we now go back to our app, then all these strings will also be switched to English. So that is working perfectly fine on Android. But on iOS, it won't work like this at the moment because we need some more setup there. And to open our project in Xcode or we can edit the iOS app, we can go to we can collapse shared. We don't need that anymore. We can go to iOS app and here this Xcode project file, we need to right click on that, open in Xcode. And here in Xcode, we need to open this info file. This is an info.plist file in which we can just define some project specific configuration as comparable to the Android manifest. And here we basically just need to define which languages our app supports. And for that, we need to right click here, click add row. And the name of this row will be CF bundle localizations. If we then press enter, and then you can see we get this localizations tab here, which is an array of um, one item at the moment. So we have one supported language, which is English, but we can actually um, duplicate this item, control C, control V, and we can then select the other language from this dropdown, which in this case is German. And we can then go to content view where our UI is located. And here for this greeting text, let's remove that. 
for this text that is currently displaying on our screen. Let's set the value to an empty string for now and launch this on our simulator because um, this shared module is never recognized if we don't launch our app or build it at least. Let's launch this and hopefully the error will go away and the build will be successful. Yes, it is. So it is launching. Um, we can ignore this app for now because it will not just show an empty text. But to now get access to our string resource, we can say strings.get. So this is our function we created in our um, common module. And the ID is shared res dot strings. We need to use this strings uh, with parentheses. And then we say hello world to display our hello world string. And then we can remove the arguments. Or well, I think on iOS we have to pass an empty list here. Um, so let's do that. Just an empty list. Let's actually put two of such texts below. So for that, we can use a VStack, which is the um, equivalent of a column in Android or in Jetpack Compose. We can put this text in there. We can copy this, paste it below, and also display our hello x string. Here we have an argument, which is Philip. And we then launch the app on our simulator. Let's take a look here. And there we go. We again have this localization feature now in iOS. So this is now German as well. But I think if I switch the language here in our settings, I think it's in general language. And here we put English to the top, then our iPhone will be rebooted. That is how it works here. It will set the language. And then if we get back to the app, then we should be able to see the English strings. So there we go. That is working perfectly fine as well. And now, as I promised, I will also show you how to share images, which is much easier than these strings because we don't have different variants for these images. So to do that, we need to go back to Android Studio and here in our shared module source common main resources, that is also the place for our images, we want to create another directory in our MR directory that is called images. And here we will just put in all our images we want to show both on iOS and Android. I will paste my sample image here, which is Kermit at 3x. Um, you need to end your images with at 3x, at least if those are PNGs or JPEGs. So um, iOS and Android actually knows the scale type of these images. So if you have uh, different resolutions of that image and you want to show different resolutions for different screen sizes and screen resolutions, uh, then you need to add the same image multiple times um, with the different values here. So this would be for very high resolution, but you can also add 2x, 1x, uh, 0.75x and so on. Let's add this here. I'm just taking a look here to show you this little image is what we will use in Android and iOS now. Let's close this and rebuild our project because then the image will be generated. There's also a Gradle command, by the way, to um, just generate new resources, which will um, use the Moco plugin. That didn't always work for me. Um, you can find this command on the um, GitHub page from Moco, but rebuilding was always more reliable for me um, to generate these resources. Okay, there we go. Rebuilding is finished. As I said on Android, this is super easy to access these images from shared resources. We can just use a normal Jetpack Compose image the painter will be a normal painter resource as we know it. It's a painter resource. And here the ID just won't come from our Android module, but rather from the shared module. So we can say com.plcoding.kmmsharingresources.r.string.hello, or not string, dot drawable, of course, dot Kermit. No, there is no such image. Okay, that's weird. Maybe uh, there was an issue with generating that. Then let's actually try the command I just talked about for Gradle. We can open our terminal for that. Oh, it actually just <laughs> generated it. Okay, so maybe it just takes a little moment. You can see this is now recognized. Um, cool. So let's launch this app and take a look here on Android and hopefully we see this image. And there we go. There's our image. So that effectively now comes from our shared resources. But now let's see how we can also show the same image on iOS. So back on iOS here, we need to create a little helper class to show these images in Swift UI. But that is something you only need to do once per project and then you can always show images. So now our root package, we want to right click here. New file, just a normal Swift file. Click next. The name will be image create this. And here we first of all need to add all of our imports we need. On the one hand, we need the shared import and we need the import for the um, Swift UI package. 
because what we will do is we will effectively write an extension for the already existing image class of SwiftUI and add an additional extension constructor here so we can also create such an image with a resource from the shared resource directory. So in it, and here we have our resource, which is in this case a key path. This sounds a little bit complex. This comes from shared RAS uh, and for some reason it again doesn't recognize that. But let's ignore that for now. Shared RAS that images and an image resource. And then in this constructor, we want to call self init. So we call an already existing constructor of this. We want the one from a UI image. And here we can say shared RAS dot images, um, opening and closing parentheses. And then we say key path dot, not that one. We want to refer to this kind of parameter here. And the key path is our resource that we passed here. Then we can say that to UI image and an exclamation mark at the end to just assert that this image exists. Well, let's rebuild our project here, go to product and build. Hopefully then our shared error will go away. Build succeeded, that's looking good. Um, so this should now go away, yes it does. So this is now an extension we can use on images in SwiftUI to also show these here in our vStack in this case. So we can say image, we want an image with a resource. And the whole point we define this key path here is that we now only need to refer to the name of our resource and not always prepend this um, shared res images, blah, 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 before that. Because what we can do is we can simply say um, backslash dot Kermit. And that is how we refer to an image resource now on iOS. That's even simpler than on Android, but it needs that initial setup. Then to also adjust it to our screen, we want to say it's resizable to be able to change its size. And we then assign an aspect ratio. Um, content mode is just dot fit. So it fits on the screen. And the aspect ratio is 1920 divided by 1395, which is just the dimensions of our image. If you have different dimensions, you of course need to choose a different aspect ratio. If we now launch this on our simulator, we should be able to hopefully see our image as well. Yes, on iOS it's working as well. So I know the setup for that was quite complex, but you of course only need to do that once per project and then you benefit from the advantages of this library forever, at least for that project. And it's really something that makes sense because why would you define the same image on uh, two platforms? If that changes at the end, then you need to change two platforms. And the same for strings. If just one string changes, then you need to always go to iOS and Xcode, change it there, go to Android, change it there. And it's just very vulnerable to bugs. So I really recommend you have a shared place for your resources, which you can do like this. So thanks for watching. If you want to become a freelancer, check the link down below. And apart from that, I wish you an amazing rest of your week. And I'll see you back in the next video. Bye bye.